Fuck it. We're doing it live. Screw it. Let's just do it. Let's stop messing around. How you guys doing? Um, gonna get on for a little bit. Uh, then there's gonna be these amount of people on, and I'll talk about the subject matter, which is uh, just a funny, a funny thing that happened in the ticket system last week when I came across an LS owner that bought a Coyote Mustang, and I'll tell you my interactions with him. Uh, it's not what you think, but it was a. I thought it was a decent story because it, it kind of opened my eyes as to who I'm dealing with, right? And for those of you that saw or see the second JMS, aka family, sorry, JMS, VMS, Family Dollar Star, finally went there on layaway, finally paid the final payment <laughs> and got my second uh, VMS wheel. It's 17 by seven and a 17 by nine. Then I got my other set. So I got a square set up, you know, but I wasn't gonna bring four fucking wheels in here. That's crazy. Ah, so how you guys doing? Mustang Gang, is, is, is this thing on? How you guys doing? Sounds good, sounds good. Okay, Anta la Mamalona, bitch. Not yet. The Mamalona has not showed up yet. I'm hoping it'll be here Wednesday, Thursday, but I haven't gotten any shipping confirmation. Uh, what's up, what's up? Uh, YouTube Corrupt said, what's up, man? Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Did um, Valley Racing release another video? Man, I, I love watching that shit. I, when that thing comes on, man, I watch the whole fucking thing because it... It... It makes me look into a world that's so foreign to me like when i was street racing with my friends i'd say hey bud did you do something to your car this weekend he goes yeah i did gears and exhaust hey do you want to race me sure that was the end of the negotiation we go up to the spot there's a stoplight at the spot we go on green and we race each other this world is we're gonna want two in the hit and I got a certain guy that preps. <laughs> they must wake that guy up in the middle of night, big country, and be like, yo, prep my shit. And he, I'm sure he does, and I'm, ho I'm hoping he gets paid to do so. Good for him. But it's so foreign to me. Then I saw a video of like an N.A. guys. Guys, there are N.A. shootouts for thousands of dollars. <laughs> the, 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 the N.A. poverty nationals happened <laughs> not too long ago and i'm like what is happening why are there people racing na it blew my mind Hel hilario trevino became a booty level member thank you very much um mustang gang casey Fatimis for an air freshener or for fuzzy dice for your new truck thank you appreciate that i'm sure the dickhead smoked in it because it has pinstripes it looks like some italian had that truck and had pinstripes and he was getting laid all the time and it looks really really italian <laughs> why couch touch the floor i'm not poor anymore i finally was able to get the last family dollar store off a of layaway badass shit so let's talk about real quick about what i came across when an ls owner ordered a tune from lund racing and we filled the tune order guy comes in and he says hey alex i am new to this i'm new to the whole coyote game i come from the ls world i want to order a na tune with a cold air, flex, and E85. Got it. He paid up. I send him a base file. Bam. And he goes, mm, I, I don't know anything about this. Just, just give me a rundown as to what needs to happen. So what I do as a test to a lot of people is I send you the instructions we send everybody. Everybody. So he just got it. He just got it. I go, okay, cool. Sends me back the, uh, the data log. And I was like, awesome. So then he goes, hey, Alex. I hope you don't roast me, but how does a cam loped idle work? I said, okay. Um, then he says, because in the LS world, and he replied about having to replace some parts in the valve train. And I said, hmm, this is a good opportunity to explain to him exactly how a cam loped idle tune works and to see if he gets it, right? So I said to the, to the, to the gentleman, well, the tune has the ability to phase the cams at idle <clears throat> with overlap that will mimic a choppy cam. Same as if you were to install a polluter or a BTR or a whatever cam in an LS, the inherent overlap cut into the cam profile will cause it to have an idle chop. We can mimic that overlap at idle with the variable cams. And then once you get off of idle, it goes back to phasing as normal. And he goes, okay, I got it. I go, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I got it. You got it. Yep, I understand exactly what you're saying. 
So I said, <clears throat> are there more of you? <laughs> are, there, are there more of you around? And he goes, oh, yeah, because this is what I think happens with LS guys. They have to work on their motors, right? They have to open up the motor. They have to put an intake heads cam in it for it to do anything. I know a lot of guys are going to say, stock bottom man has gone fucking 720s. Holy shit, shut the fuck up. So they they have to put a cam in it. So they have to, you have to learn how to work on a motor. Then they come to a Coyote and we tell them, absolutely don't have to do a damn thing to a Gen two coyote and up to make close to a thousand wheel all you have to do is boost and fuel and we do the rest and he was like huh interesting so then he got a flex and e85r tune he sent me the freaking data logs and he was done now in the middle of all of that in the middle of all of that this is what i was dealing with i was dealing with guys that were getting a tune for let's say a 350 manifold jlt and lu47s i say well here's the tune for that and they put the tune in first without putting the parts in and send me a log i go this is way fucked up this data is super jack you must have a massive air leak can you send me a picture of your engine bay and I see a stock cold air and I'm like, I see a stock cold air and a stock intake manifold. And I go, did you not, did you not install the parts? He goes, no, I wanted to make sure you get the tune dial then first before I installed the parts. Guys, over 75% of the people I deal with, I don't know about anyone else, over 75% of the people I deal with think the tune has to be dialed in first before the parts are put on. Like, I knew that when I was 17 with Fox bodies, I couldn't just put injector. I, I couldn't just throw parts at the car without having proper calibration. Remember the CNL mass air meter that was calibrated for a certain size injector? That little tiny tube inside the CNL mass air meter was different than stock. So this tube is calibrated for 19 pound injectors. This tube is calibrated for 24s. This tube, because it changes the diameter of the mass air. That's basically what, what it was doing the sampling the where, where, where it was sampling air and this ls guy just got it and the the subsequent conversations made me go so okay ls guys have to work on their car ls guys have to they have to get in there they have to do a lot of manual labor on their vehicle so they have a better understanding of modding when they come over to the coyote world they go, I don't have to do shit. No, dude, maybe bolt on a cold air and an intake manifold. But aside from that, that's it. You're done. And if you want to make more power, you bolt on a blower or you bolt on some turbos and you install a fuel system and you party. And I think that that's when the, the, the LX, the LS owner realizes, oh, that's the allure. That's the draw of the Coyote. The draw of the Coyote and Coyote-powered Mustangs is the lack of work that you need to do to make power. Unfortunately, that attracts the fuck boy that doesn't know a goddamn thing and wants to, you know, make sure the tune's running good before the parts get put on. So it's very difficult um, to maintain your composure. Let, let, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes it's really difficult to maintain your composure. And I walk away. I just get up out of my computer and I go, go for a walk around the block because I'm like, because when you get like, 30 of those 40 of those do you know how many times i hear i have a race coming up sunday i need to get it dialed in and it is friday at 4 p.m i am very honest with the customer i say you're not making that race use the weekend to dial the car in oh i gotta go i gotta go they go anyway and they go it blew up it blew up it blew up i'm i'm shocked it blew up you mean we didn't see any data logs dialed and we didn't dial it in and it blew up and now you want to pop off that it's my fault now i don't say that in the ticket system i say that in my head and i go oh let me guess you raced it without us having dialing you know dialing in anything or seeing any logs well i just needed to get to that race why do people think they're fucking street outlaws and they need to get to a race i've also seen people really hurrying up to go to a race and then they go with stock tires and i'm like why did you why did you go with stock tires it, it Look, I think the LS owner or any owner, 
even an old Fox body owner, that will admittedly not know anything, but has had hands on and had to do work on their vehicle, probably understands remote tuning better than someone that just buys it, affords the $700 to $900 car payment with $1,000 down with a credit score of $550. Oh, $550, that's pretty good. No, it's not. It's really fucking bad. And they they just want to be the cheapest, the cheapest, they want to go the, the fastest, the cheapest way possible. If you think budget and racing, you're already thinking fucked up. A lot of people follow the red car because they think it's a cheap build. Guys, if I would have taken into account the converter, the manifold, the injectors, the K member, the 373s and the drag pack, I could have put boost on it and run a 1050 or 1040 on pump gas, right? That is not cheaper. A lot of people say, well, we relate better to the red car because we can afford that. No, you can't because everything that's in the red car, if you were to add it up, it buys you boost. It buys you a Paxton, a Vortec, or even maybe a, a used TVS kit out there for about 5,500 bucks, 82 millimeter pulley, 79 millimeter pulley, ME 52s, 1050s stock converter so you have to kind of understand where people are coming from to see how to gauge how good they are at, at you know understanding the relationship between you and your tuner so the ls guy if you're an ls guy i'm talking to you ls guy if you're an ls guy and you work on your car you've installed the cam you've installed you know rockers push rods you've done intakes you've done it all in the coyote you don't have to do any of that shit and all you have to do is listen to your tuner. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice to be able to go nines just with boost and minimal mods and not have to pull the motor apart at all? Unless you like doing that shit. Unless you like doing that shit. So if those kinds of owners are out there and want to convert to Coyote, I welcome you. I need you. Because I'd rather deal with you than the guy that wants to run an NA shootout somewhere. And then wants to squeeze every single little... Do you know how many times I've heard, I think there's more in it. I, 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 I think there's more in it. More in what? Well, my buddy's car is seeing this much timing. My car is seeing one degree less. I really think it'll work better with one more degree of timing. Your buddy is in altitude and he sees a low air load. You're, in, you're, in, you're not in altitude and you see a higher air load. But then, then you have to explain tuning to them. I've also had people tell me, eh, you know, you need to crack the throttle open a little more. <laughs> I need to crack the throttle. Oh, okay. To the carburetor. To the carburetor. I have to go to the carburetor and crack the throttle a little more. Because that's what you would do if the car is stumbling after startup, right? You crack the throttle a little more. No. Everything's torque tables, torque table related. If I do that, timing goes low. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So... If there are any LS owners out there that want to not work on their car, go really fast, and were curious about the Coyote in general, according to this LS owner that I'm dealing with, this is cake shit. Absolutely cake shit. It did, he was like, I, I just put the tune in and it worked. And you explained to me how the Camelope Idle tune and it worked. And I was very happy with the results. And I'm like, oh. <gasps> Then you have 40 other guys who are like, I'm going to install the tune first before the parts come, okay? By the way, Alex, I finished dialing in the Flex E85 cammed and uh, drag mode tunes. I'm going to switch cold air intakes. You're going to what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wanted a Steeda cold air intake, and I dialed in pump gas flex, E85, E85 manual mode, E85 drag mode, E85. Oh, I'm going to change my cold air. Okay, go back on pump gas. You can't just change the cold air for all my tunes. No. Nope. You decided that you thought a cold air is going to make a big of a fucking difference. Guys, the cold air is not going to make that big of a fucking difference. A stock cold air is good enough for what you need to do. Hell, a popular, uh, a popular cold air intake upgrade now is basically a stock cold air. That's like an upgrade. People are now ditching their cold air intakes aftermarket and going back to a stock one that has some modifications done to it, which actually work pretty well. And what do we have to do? We tell you, oh, oh, so you've already done this. We have customers that go stock cold air, all the shit, JLT, all the shit, Steeda, all the shit, PMAS, all the shit, and then they go, I'm gonna put a stock one back on. 
And I'm like, I could have told you that from the get-go. But for whatever reason, the customer doesn't believe the tuner. For whatever reason, the customer thinks he knows more than the tuner. For whatever reason, the customer talks to his buddies who don't know anything and also don't believe the tuner until you've spent $900 to $1,200 on different cold air intakes only to end up with the stock one back in the car. Seen it so many times, and that is now a popular mod on Gen 3s, modifying the stock cold air intake. And and, and you, I basically say, put your old tune back in it, the one with the stock air box. Are you sure? Yes, the diameter is stock. It's the same. And they're like blown. They're just blown away at the whole situation. So uh, LS owners, I welcome you. I want you in here. I want you being part of the part of the Coyote lifestyle. Why? Because you're easy to work with. You seem to understand shit. And there's less shit you have to do to make these cars fast. So please come on down. There's plenty of room for everybody. I'm trying to see if I can see the actual um, uh, paid questions here. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So get to your questions. Get to your uh, comments. Talk some shit. It is called talking shit. Omar Garza says, follow me on IG, Elote Fed. Elotes are gross. Isn't that corn stuffed with butter and like paprika? <laughs> That's the most disgusting fucking thing I've ever seen. How the fuck do you not realize you're tuning for those specific parts? I have no idea. Do they purposely give you the difficult customers? So YouTube Corrupt and Free Speech, when I was gone at Texas 2K, Brandon, Dakota, and, and I'm sorry, Brandon, Nardi, and Tyler, and some of Junior... Uh, took my customers for two days and they went, holy shit, Alex. I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think you have it bad. Imagine you got some way from the valley. It was like, hey, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm going to change my code. They're in there 50 times. So, uh, <laughs> and then they do the run around and then they ask the crazy questions and you're, and, and I'm patient. I'm like, they're just trying to go fast. They're just trying to go fast. They're just trying to, you know, but you can, you can do your best. But I, I have some very difficult customers. Absolutely. freaking lutely Panochito says, Phil, <laughs> I got a chance to snag a 2300 kit on the Lolo. Do you guys support the Roush kit tune-wise? Um, just looking to make a little more power NA than just play on the street. Phil, yes, absolutely. If it's a Gen 1, Gen 2, yes. Gen 3, not yet. JD Swag, channel support. Cow touch all three walls today. I got the car show chair. Chilling. I got the turbo headers. Them bitches might end up in the Fairmont. The goal with the Fairmont is run sub 850 with the blower and then sell the blower more than likely. Um, Justin Basin says, I got a 15 GT V3, 3.3 pulley, 1,000 cc injectors, 91 pump. For what? A 3.3 pulley on, on a 91 pump gas. That's just all fucking bad. Are you insane? It's only making 6 PSI. One bank is lean. One bank is rich. Any ideas? <laughs> the injectors clogged again this is it injectors could be clogged your o2s could be going bad you're not seeing proper uh, manifold reference to the blow-off valve many things and if you look at my 19 gt dyno video it explains where to grab the proper boost reference for your uh blow-off valve. but a 3-3 pulley justin basin on on 91 is dumb like retarded you need to do a 3-6 or a 3-8 you will blow that car up 337 Speed said, would you ever own a 2020 GT500? I thought about that. I was talking to Jake about that the other day. We were over there hanging out. Uh, actually, I went over there and got my, oh yeah, trans break time for the uh, red car. So Mikey had borrowed my MSD two-step for the red car because the red car does have a two-step installed in it. Um, and I wanted, uh, this is basically to hold the RPM at a predetermined setting, which is right there, those little knobs right there. Right there. It'll basically, you could set the RPM, you know, whatever whatever you want come on focus focus baby there you go so i'm gonna put that in the red car take video of me doing trans brake launches on the street and then i'm gonna tow the red car friday to the track and launch on the trans brake and see if i can go better than a 15360 foot but um yeah i would buy a 2020 gt500 but only boy not at the prices that they're asking if, if it gets down to sixty thousand dollars maybe one day years from now but i don't know depending on what's out there later on like if there's a model test a tesla model s plaid edition out there for like a hundred and the gt500 is still 75 80 yeah it's gonna be a tough decision but they're a cool car to keep stock and drive around i think i think it's a cool car to have stock keep drive around i don't think 
I don't think it's the kind of vehicle I would like to own because I kind of have those type of vehicles already. It would just be redundant in my opinion. Um, hey, Alex, a 19 GT tuned by you made the switch after a recommendation from Matthew Goodall. Nice. Car's running great. But here we go. But I noticed the one-two shift always happens at 7,000 RPMs. Could you help me getting that to 7,500 with 355 gear? Sure, I could do that. Um, now, depending on the power it's making, that's okay. Jay-Z gave me 20 bucks to ask that question. First gear is 470 something on a 10R80. So you're not gonna see like a half second gain going from 7,000 to 7,500. Matter of fact, the red car gained nothing from shifting to 6,800 to 7,500 Gained nothing. Nothing in the 60 foot, nothing. It didn't gain shit. So I'll do it. I'll, I'll, help. I'll, I'll, I'll work with you. But there's no guarantee it's going to gain a goddamn thing. I think it's good. And don't become one of these guys. I really think it'll go quicker if I bump up the RPM 400. No, it's not. What does the Steeda car shift at? 7,500. How much timing does it have? About 30. Same shit as the base file. But I thought that was shifting at 15,000 RPMs. No, no. All, the reason it's fast, it's because he did some stuff mechanically to make it fast. I'm so glad I tuned in last week to learn that Terminators hold their value, says Matt 2011 GT. By the way, are you some kind of fucking lawyer or something? He's always on my shit. I love it. I immediately cashed my 401k and bought six Terminators and two Heritage Broncos. Don't worry. It done. Uh, <laughs> it's very good. It's very good. A lot of references for the channel for the channel just in that little thing right there. Um, how fast did the O2 spin up in the ECU go from open to closed loop? About 30 seconds. 15 to 30, 15, well, I think 20 seconds. We start the car. Them O2s are not even moving. They're not even doing a goddamn thing. It's running off of the base fuel table cold. Then they switch on about 20 to 30 seconds after the car turns on. That's what sometimes when you turn a car on, it goes, chicka, chicka. That's when they turned on. But can you do something before that? What am I, what am I going to do before that if the O2s aren't fucking running? That means you got an air leak or the base fuel table is super lean. I'm not going to start fucking with OEM4 data that's on the money. Oh! <laughs> Ashi, Alex is my tuner. I must be an idiot, says Austin Maynard. Just kidding, bitch. We touched base earlier about my car situation. Badass. Good. Um, yeah, most of my guys today were, were okay. Yesterday, oh my God. Everyone is using the email system as an instant messenger. Like, when when I when I say tune attached, here's how to attach the tune on the N-gauge. You go, what's up, YOLO? I don't reply. I just don't reply. Hey, Alex, when you're at elevation, which horsepower number is the real number? Corrected or uncorrected? The real number? I would say uncorrected. I'm sorry, corrected. Sorry. What? Uncorrected. Because if you're in altitude and this stupid thing is correcting 30%, that's not a real number in my opinion. Give me the uncorrected number it made that day on the dyno. If you're up in the fucking moon and you're like, well, it made 200 horse here, but the correction factor is 800%. So it made 2000 on pump gas. That's a bullshit correction number. The correction number should be low. And I've seen many people that can fudge a correction number based on the temperature of the stack or the parasitic multiplier setting. So... Make sure that if you're at the fucking dyno and you make a lot of power, you make go down and look at the corrected number and make sure it's not 30%, 15%. Make sure it's low. Um, oh, my God. Flow, slow guy, 78. Well, leaving the converter completely unlocked. Smoke my 6R80, 890 car went unlocked. But when locked, car bogs terribly. Uh, it bogs, but what does a mile an hour? It, it, will, it will cause the transmission to get hotter. Yes. Yes, it will cause the trans to get hotter. My Fairmont does not have lockup in drive. It has lockup in sport. So what I do is when I'm cruising around, it's unlocked. Then when I want a little RPM drop, I put it in sport and it drops. I use it like as an overdrive. But at the track, it couples so well because it's designed to have a TVS. It's specific for that car, that weight, that power adder. It couples so nicely. I leave it. I leave it unlocked, and it does what it does. Same as two fifty two unlock. No, lock with lockup clutch. Uh, with with a uh, two fifty two, uh, locks up real well. Like you don't need lockup clutches on half of these, depending on how it locks up or how it couples. I keep saying cup uh, locks, but it's coupling is what I'm referencing. 
Coach Huerta says, hey, Alex, done with NA. What would you do for the 14 Mustang MTV2, 373 centrifugal or TVS? I don't race the car. I just want a fun daily. Okay, a TVS. A TVS is going to have way more fun factor than a centrifugal because you could do some dumb shit at low RPM. So a... Um, Roush 2300, a VMP TVS 2300, don't go 2650, don't go 2650, don't go 2650. And, um, that thing will whip up nicely and it'll make good power. Garage Junkie became a member. Booty level. The highest level is the booty level. My car keeps getting random misfire, says Eric V, Eric 5, and random misfire on startup. I swapped out the spark plugs already. Any idea why it keeps misfiring? It's a twin turbo 85 with 1050 injectors. Thanks. Did you do a crank relearn? Did you do a crank relearn? Did you do a crank relearn? Do you have a PO315 code pending? SVT Vin says, what plugs and gap are you running on section? Hate. Oh, fuck. Here we go. Hold on. Let me find them. So this is a. <clears throat> this is the spark plug I'm running on Section Eight right now, the GT500. <clears throat> Sorry. Come on, zoom in, baby. Come on. Oh, you don't want to zoom? No, you want to zoom? Maybe, maybe the light. Anyway, it's an NGK BR7EF, which is a 3346, and the gap is like 22 thousandths. 22 or 20, 20 or 22 thousands. Very tight gap. It might even be 18 thousands because it makes close to 1200. So it's a NGK BR7 EF, a 3346 gapped at, I want to say 18, 18 to 20 thousands. McFuckface gave me uh, 20 bucks and then gave me the uh, fuck you emoji. Awesome. <laughs> Scott's Scott Cup Cuthbert says Gen 3 Coyote swap 16 Taurus. What would that take? Dude, just don't. Just just don't. Just don't. It takes a lot of fab work, a lot of dumb shit, and it's and you're gonna end up with the gayest fucking Gen 3 swap like on the planet. Don't do it. But I want to be different, Alex. What the fuck you want me to do? I just don't care. Love you. Thanks for the money. <laughs> Colton Parker, 11 uh, 5 with a short throw caliber. Oh, you got a short throw? Let me just stop the presses and make sure that the short throw value file is in the tune. Uh, Calamar cocktail. <laughs> so you got Amsoil, some other shit, and some other shit. <laughs> oh, it totally changes how it shifts. No, it doesn't. Um, FBO, E85, Ported Boss, BMR Suspension. Oh my God, this guy's full of all the garbage. I'd like to go dig racing to no prep. Any tips? Uh, sell that car. And get a Turbo 400 Coyote. <laughs> you want to go no prep racing dig? I mean, what in the fuck are you... Why do people have an obsession with no prep racing? If I go to a track that is prepped badly, I stop going to that track. Why do people have an obsession with no prep racing? No prep racers make... Like good no prep racers make thousands of horsepower and they way dial it back and then once the rubber lay down what is the obsession with no prep racing i do street stuff because that's street that is no prep but to go to a track so that there is no prep blows my fucking mind do you like mgw shifters i do not i don't even have to finish that sentence i do not uh for for gt 500s i think your options are limited but I've I've seen Steeda shifters be decent, but honestly, I would do if, if Barton makes a shifter for the GT500, I'd get that overall. Oh, but they don't make it. Well, guess what? Sorry, I don't like MGWs. Just not a fan. And Terminators guys do suck with their Oakley wearing no fear barbed wire tats. You're 100 percent right. <clears throat> uh, red eye, red key. Whoa, you're a badass. You got a red eye with a red key. Just sign on to the Radford Bondurant Racing School. Time that came with my car what wait wait what you bought a car and it came with racing school tips did you see that fucking hellcat plow a truck right after a cars and coffee any driving instruction is a good thing to help nearly 800 horsepower right hope to see you fellas at the track okay that's that's pretty that's a pretty good that's good reasoning that's good reasoning but 
are they giving people driving tips? Why are you buying an 800 horsepower car and trying to race that if you've never raced? If you've never raced, I highly suggest you race something that has really low horsepower. Again, I started with a 260 horsepower Fox body, shifting my way into the 1170s. Then I graduated to a 350 horsepower Fox Fox body. Then I went backwards because I'm stupid and had a three valve, like a dumb, stupid cunt that I was. And then I got rid of that dumb shit, got a coyote Mustang. And by that time, I, I pretty much I had I had things figured out. But to start with 800 rear wheel horsepower, that is really not smart. I would rather you don't even race that car. Okay, first tip, red eye red key, get sticky tires. I am blown away as to how many Hellcats I see at the track with stock tires. Oh, it's got traction control. Shh. Get fucking sticky tires. Like ridiculously expensive. It's not R888. I'm saying an ET Street R, a Mickey Thompson, an M&H, a Hoosier, something. And that'll at least keep you off the wall for a second. But honestly, if you're going to go racing, you should start with a low horsepower car to number one, get familiar with how racing works. Do uh, you know how many times I go to the track and I see someone double bulb somebody or deep stage or stage with their back tires? Every Friday, I go to the track and I see someone stage with their back tires, not know where to stage, not know when to launch. They only pre-stage, never you know fully stage. And I'm like... Do these people not like watch a bunch of YouTube videos of how to, how to, how to like go? When I went to the track for the first time ever, <clears throat> you know what I watched? NHRA drag racing obsessively. And I'd never wanted to go to a track and look like one of those idiots that is going past the tree and staging with his back tires. And people go, oh, Alex, someone's got to start somewhere. No, you don't. There is way too much information out there about drag racing. There's so many YouTube channels. There's so many things that you that you could look up how to make <laughs> an or <laughs> a, 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 what do you call it? A Nilla wafer uh, pie that I've never cooked in my life, and I can I can make that based on some of the shit that's out there. And you're telling me you can't find a video just showing you how to stage, how to do a burnout, how to it, bl guys. One of my first videos ever was me teaching people how to race at a uh, drag track. And the amount of people that were like, really? You got to do a burnout. You got to do a burnout in the water box and end the burnout in the water box? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And then after you do that, uh, you make sure that you drag as much water as possible all the way to the starting line. And then when you get there, you dump the clutch at 6,000 RPMs and let go of the clutch. And they were like, Really? I'm like, yes. Guys, there were people that legitimately thought that was like how you race. And I went, oh, the world is full of dumbasses. Okay, I get it. The world's full of fucking dumb motherfuckers. So you have to be careful of the shit you say. You can't just go out there telling people, oh, you know, do this because they'll do it. And then they'll get mad at you because they'll say, well, you told me to do that. Well, you listen to me? Like you legit listen to me? It blew my mind how many people actually saw that video and listened to the fact that I said, yeah, just dump it, rev it to 6,000 RPMs and dump the clutch. And they were like, oh, okay, got it, Alex. Hey, I did that and my car all crashed. And I go, ha, 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 ah, that's funny. And they're like, no, 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 Alex, I actually did that and my car fucking crashed. I'm like, you actually did what I said to do in that video? <clears throat> um, channel support says Matthew Goodall. What's up, brother? Uh, no questions today. Just enjoying the show. Thanks for the great content. Hopefully get to the rear end fixing the car and get into boost, brother. Fuck all that NA bullshit. Okay, same setup says SVT Vince, and we're running the same boost. Thanks. I also need to ditch the HX and go from ice tank to blower IAT's 214 mid pull. That is very high. That is very high. 214's mid pull? That sounds like an intercooler pump is not working. Something's up. Something's up. Unless you're boosting the shit out of it. Zach Carroll says, Alex, I've been missing the show lately. Worst been giving me the bitch up. I put a VMP23 TVS on my 11 GT500, 26, 10%, TJ67, FIC1000, BAPS, Cooks FFE, pump. I'm pumping boosting, tuned by BJ. Think I can hit 750? Yeah, BJ McCarty it would probably give you about 21 degrees or so. 21 degrees on that setup, it'd be close to 750 with boosting. Yeah, it should be pretty close. Shout out to BJ. How much power should a Gen 2 Paxton make with a 3.8 pulley? Gen 2 Paxton make with 3.8 pulley. FFE and 18 manifold on 93. About 640, 630. Not much. The 3.8 pulley is the quote-unquote stock pulley for that car. I would do the 3.6 on 93 octane. You can get away with the 3.6 on 93 octane for sure. You can make probably close to 680. 
Um, and if you take the intake tube off, it'll probably make 20 more. It's crazy. Best options with a 273 credit score for a 2020 GT500. Wow. You know, I wonder what the guy at the dealership says when, you know, brothers go in there with a, with, with a no credit score and they try to get a car. Like, what the fuck do they do? They actually shop his credentials around and some bank, Bobo Bank of Bank of Zimbabwe fucking hell. I'm like, what the fuck? Look, <laughs> I've seen, someone said, the 392 on the side of a Challenger is not the cubic inches. It's the driver's credit score. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Omar Garza, what's up, brother? On a 1910 or 80 TVS 2650, when you look, when you lock the converter, just curious, my car feels like it pulls like a freight train the whole track. The thing is with the 10 or 80, the gear stack is so close, you don't really notice it. So on the 3, 4 shift, um, Omar Garza, go to the gear command, I'm sorry, slip actual and slip desired PID on the end gauge. So graft RPM, throttle, and slip desired versus slip actual and slip desired is what we're commanding. Slip actual is what is happening. So you'll see slip actual commanded probably on the three, four shift and you won't even notice it. It's so subtle. On the red car, everyone goes, I hear a delay on the two, three shift. And they go, do you think it'll go faster if you don't lock the converter? No, it loses three mile an hour. It's a loose, loose converter. I need to couple it. And why do I couple it there? Because after 50, yes, five, zero tunes, that's the best place to lock it. I did all this dialing in on the street. And who benefits? You motherfuckers, because I gave my tune to Matthew Goodall. And he went the exact same time I did, 11.3 with less mods. So that's the, that's the whole reason I have that car, so that I can do all of the vetting on my end on an NA application so that someone like Matthew Goodall can just get my tune and boom, he's done. I don't save the sauce for anybody. And I've also heard that dumb shit on the, on the, on the, on the ticket system. Oh, the Lund Racing doesn't give the good shit to the customers. They only leave it for Manuel. And you know what? You're right. You're right. We give you the B junk shit. And we give Manuel the good shit. We give him the sauce. We give him the midnight sauce. And you get just the bubble file from the B side. We actually dig in the trash and go, oh, you want a twin turbo? Here you go. And when Manuel orders a tune, we, oh, it, it, it's right off the fucking oven. Hot as fuck. Here you go, papi. Go gap that Corvette this weekend. Fucking people, dude. <clears throat> <laughs> Casey Cardenas says, outside of you owning a GT500, thoughts on a 14 GT500 versus a 14 RS3 Illuminator? Have you ever tuned in a 14 Illuminator? I know they're rare. My bro sold his. Uh, yeah, I sold, uh, I did one uh, with, um, he was an electrician from Ohio. He came down to VMP and he had a Roush RS3 with an Illuminator. That bitch can make as much power as it wants. Like I was just so comfortable throwing timing at it and boost at it because it was on E85. And I think it was into the 800 horsepower range but real easily. He ended up selling that car, if I'm not mistaken. He ended up selling that. It was a black 14 Roush RS3 with an illuminator and cams. He put cams in it. That bitch made like 800 horsepower, no problem. I think he's somewhere on my videos. If you go back on my videos and you see me at VMP with a black Roush RS3 that has like tire letters on his shit, that was an illuminator 14. That was a cool car. Um, ba, 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 ba. it's hilarious when people find in shit they can't really afford in order to receive praise from complete strangers. Blows my mind. People do that with houses. People do that with houses. You know how many people I know that are house poor? Like if I sold the, think, guys, really think, do some math. If I sold the GT500, the red car, the white car, and kept the Fairmont, what kind of a house do you think I can afford? Probably afford a fucking nicer house than anyone fucking can ever think of. But would I be happy? Fuck no. I could barely afford to put furniture in it. I could barely afford to... I don't want to get up every morning <clears throat> and like do work on the house. If it rains, I have to look around for leaks just in case. Cut the grass. Fuck that. Fuck that. No, thank you. Three valve credit unit says Match 11 GT. Uh, when the dealer updates a PCM calibration, I know you revert back to stock when you take it. But question, does it... Does the updated Ford calibration affect the aftermarket tune when we install? Thanks. 
Great question, Jeezy Stang. So what happens is if you go to the dealership for any updates, like the phaser issue, the Gen 3 phaser issue, Ford is now starting to replace the phasers and it's fixing the issue. Yes, Ford is now starting to replace the intake cam phasers on Gen 3s and fixing the issue. So if your car is still under warranty, get that shit fixed. So if Ford updates the calibration on your vehicle, it unmarries it from your tuner. That's right. So if you go back, return to stock, go to the dealer, get the work done, and you try to flash the tune again, it'll say this, this tuner is for a different tuner because Ford updates the calibration to the latest. And then that literally unmarries the end gauge from the car. Now, on things like an RTD, it might be fine because I think the RTD licenses to the VIN and the catch code on the, uh, on the uh, computer, I'm not 100%. Because we, I can't really, I can't really get into it without giving stuff away. But basically, I think the RTD will be okay. But if not, you'll have to go through the same process. You won't have to relicense it. If you do, they'll credit you that back. <clears throat> Looking forward to look La Coyote content. Javi Luna, we're going to do a contest. What do you guys think? Let's, let's give it up right now. Start throwing names out there for the truck. It's a silver F-150. I'm obviously going to put up a poll. Uh, on the community tab of my channel when I get it. I'll take a picture of it, me, me with the truck, and we're going to put up a poll of what to name La Coyote. Now, I have a couple of names in mind, but I'd like to know what you guys think naming a F-150. Because, uh, look, red car is Jean Grey, but I just call her red car. The white car is just the white car. Fairmont is Hush Money, and Section Hate is the GT500. Red Eye says... That's funny. Bondurant kit is for basic car handling skills and it's free for our SRT buyer. Been watching Alex a long time. I'm taking it slow and easy. I know my skill level. Okay, good. Red Eye, then you must be, well, you must be with it. You must be with it. Now, truth be told, I'd love a Red Eye. I'd love a black Red Eye and just daily it. Actually, gun to my head, GT500 or a Red Eye? Red Eye. There's one here and I see it every day and I'm like, that bitch is bad. That bitch is bad not only is it big wide but every time he gets on the uh military and he whacks it and you hear that fucking thing forget the whine the exhaust tone sounds ridiculous in that car i'm like man that's a badass ride and it's black and it looks like the fucking uh batmobile it's cool as shit it's cool as shit sorry Monty540 said, you'd have a nice house, but your house, your couch will still touch the wall. You're not, you're not, you're not wrong. <clears throat> um, Bronco Stank says, Dietrich's injectors, 16 MX, to whatever. Good injectors, but, oh my God, it says 1200. This is the, uh, uh, the Dietrich's I would get, the Dietrich 95s. You're welcome. <laughs> That's it. Uh, if you're going boot, boost, the, all you need is a thousand CC. So Dietrich 95s are the only ones that I like and I've tuned and have good success with. Since Len doesn't support SCT the other way, guys, what the fuck is wrong with you? Look, we parted ways. So I, li I like how people think we like dumped SCT. No, we both said, you know what? We ain't going to do you. You ain't going to do us. We good. So stop saying Lund dumped SCT because it makes it sound like we dumped you guys. No. If it was up to us, we'd still be using that shit. Um, what are the other options? Trying to switch to Lund ASAP. Jeremy failed. There's an RTD from HP Tuners, look it up on our website. And if you find a Lund Racing N-Gage, you can get that. And if you have an HP Tuners N-Gage, you can use that. Pussy Pounder says, La Mamalona be like, La Toxica. Like, La Toxica. That's good. Pussy Pounder. La Toxica. Very nice. Very nice. I like that name already. La Toxica. Call it, call the white car, La Guerra, La, la, guerra, la Guerra, La Guerra, La Guerita. Eh, la Guerra, maybe. But that's... I'm not going to make all my cars Spanish, you know, you know, beaner names. I'm good. La Coyote name idea, te la rayo. <laughs> Me la rajas. Me la pela. Um, first of all, shit credit scores are laughed about first and foremost at the sales desk. Exactly. So when I bought my truck, this is the first time in my life that I've ever bought a vehicle sight unseen. Never bought a vehicle sight unseen. So I called and I was like, hi, do you have the truck available? Yes. I'd like to buy it. How's your credit? Excellent. Uh, can you fill out a credit application? Sure. Sends me the link. I filled it out like in two minutes. Here you go. Oh, you want to put money down? Sure. How much? I go, four grand. And he was like, uh, you got a card? I got a card. Gave him the card. He goes, uh, okay. Calls me back. Uh, yeah, you're approved. I'm like, yep. <laughs> can you ship it down? Oh, uh, yeah, hold on. Yeah, it'll be this. Sweet. 
Done. <laughs> but when you go to a dealership knowing your credit is garbage, you're in for a world of hurt. You're in for high interest rates. You're in for big money down. You're in for being upside down immediately on that motherfucker. It's going to be a problem. <clears throat> uh, Alex, how's life? Call the truck and I sees. <laughs> that shit gets everywhere. Um, it is. It is the color of any sees, like nickel anti sees. What's the max horsepower for stock Gen 2 motor? Now, stock safe. To me, 800, 850 is stock safe. Can you make a thousand? Sure. Would I make a thousand? No. I'd keep it at about 800, 850 so it could be good for a very long time. B Lightning says couch touches the wall. Alex, how do you like to using HP software versus the previous software? I like the previous software personally because it my eyes are comfortable to it. HP Tuner software is is backwards than what I'm used to. Just backwards. Like the tables are flipped, the things are named something different, and our you know, Love Racing had had their own software and I, I saw everything. I'm limited as to what I can see at HP Tuners, but uh fuck. When it was Lund Racing shit, I everything was available. Uh, I've had my Luntune 13 for six years. Dead reliable and fun as hell. 1190 car. Boost it or spend that money and get into a Gen 2. Loving the shows. Now, you have a 13. Look, I would put a 10 pound, 10 pound, 10 pounds of boost on it, bro. And if you're happy with 1190s and six years of reliability, 10 pounds of boost with a TVS or a Whipple or a Paxton, I would do, I would do a TVS to be honest. I had so much fun with a 10 or 11 PSI TVS car. It was just a lot of fun. Not a 2650, not a 2650, not a 2650. Alex, why not a 2650? It doesn't whip up the same. The 2.3 whipped up faster. It felt torquier at low boost because you have a stock bottom end. Now, a 2650, you can make 1100 horse with it. Great. But if you're spinning the rotor slower with a big pulley because you're on pump gas and stock bottom end, it is not going to feel as violent down low than a good old-fashioned 2.3 Roush or VMP Gen 2R. To me, the Gen 2R is still king daddy for stock bottom end Gen 1s. How about calling the truck the truck? <laughs> That's good. Uh, <laughs> 2020 GT intake FFE and E85. What could be causing surging installing a low RPM in, 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 reverse, in reverse or on hills? Intake cam falling out of phasing. Call the truck La Couch. Tune truck um v12 buick guy says do the gen 3 trucks have the same phaser ratio like the mustang absolutely absolutely freaking lootly yes they do you could call the f-150 coyote which means coyote in spanish <laughs> coyote uh no that's really dumb but thank you uh m heater <laughs> 14 mtd 2373 ported 18 manny or cj manny full bolt on only what 2014 mtd 2 with 373s ported 18 manifold or a cj manifold full bolt on only well full bolt on means a cj right full bolt on means everything when you put a ported 18 manifold with a stock throttle body that's not fully bolted on what does fully bolted on mean to me headers cj cams everything but boost everything but boost e85 everything but boost full bolt on is not an 18 manifold and the stock cams and e85 full bolt on is not bbk headers a boss intake and pump gas i'm sorry it's just not Naming cards is gay. Michael Nunn. I know, but people like to engage uh, things. They like to engage into the... Uh, engaging your audience is important on YouTube. Normally, I wouldn't give two shits. Um, so I'm in the peasant chat. <clears throat> All right, that was quick. What's next for the red card to get closer to the tens? Um, I'm just going to do the trans break, and then after the trans break, it's going to go away for a little bit. It's not going to be on the channel for months because it's heading out west to do some stuff that i'll talk about some other time but it's not going to get a nitrous kit in, for a very long time so i'm going to concentrate on the white car getting a clutch e85 in it i'll concentrate on hush money and i'll concentrate on section hate and, and the truck but the red car is going to go away for a little bit and i can't talk about it because it's all super secret bullshit but it's going to go away for a little bit um but i'm going to try to trans break friday and i don't think it'll dip into the tens I, the other thing i could try is an exotic fuel right not just E85, but I could try some nasty ethanol that like violent shit. And I have the recipe, I have the formula, and I might try that at the same time. So I might do crazy exotic fuel and trans break at the track Friday and see if the axles hold. It might touch a 10.9. 
Makes sense. The dino car made 5650 wheel, but only trapped 120. Yeah, exactly. So on the dyno in altitude, your car made 650 wheel corrected. And then it only trapped 120. My car trapped 121, 122. And that car makes 420 rear wheel horsepower. 420 the red car makes. Or Ferda Diaz noticed that there was 666 viewers. Ooh, el diablo. Channel support. Learned everything about Coyotes from you. Currently tuned by AED, but I respect London. All the records. Keep up the good work. Thank you, NB50. I appreciate you uh, not being tuned by us, but still watching the channel. I appreciate that. You know how some people can get adversarial about the whole situation. But you're cool. <clears throat> Call it La Lobo. Man, you guys suck. All I'm saying is some of the fastest Fox bodies got an LS in it. I'm just saying. Right. I know that. But what does that have to do with you? Some of the fastest Fox bodies, the guys decided, I'm, I can build an LS, it's cheaper, or, or just the packaging is nicer, and they go fast. But can you afford that? Can you build a fast Fox body like them? Or are you just living through someone else's shit? I don't do that. I don't go, well, like MMR, right? MMR has the fastest Coyote, like anywhere, right? Do you see me saying, well, MMR's got the fastest Coyote, so buy MMR shit? Now, I just say, well, you know, they have a motor that's made out of billet, the block, and big cubic inches, turbo's bigger than my fucking head. I can't compare that to what I'm doing. I can't compare that to what I'm doing. We're in different worlds. <clears throat> AV661 says, I have a 15 with a flex tune. Do I need a revision for free, free flowing headers? They're not BBK, don't worry. Um, I would do this, though. I would, I would install all, look. That would be illegal, EPA illegal, and I would drive that uh, only on a closed course, racetrack, not on public roads. But just plug in all of your O2s. You might get a code for CAD inefficiency if you go free-flowing exhaust. We, we can't shut off codes. That is against EPA regulations. We got to stay in service. Ever use one ethanol that real street performance sells? It's direct swap for 85. It's a new tuning required. No new tuning required. I've used one ethanol R on all the vehicles, and I have not noticed one thing different. Because where I get fuel from, tests 85 percent the one ethanol r is very good it's very good and if you don't want to deal with pumpy 85 you're good to go but i at my power level i'm not noticing any difference i have four jugs of one ethanol r thanks to john senior and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna i'm gonna use that as a cocktail and i'm gonna see if i can uh get some more power out of the red car since the truck is sh towing section hate call the truck slumlord What's a 60 to 130 on the red car? Love you. Uh, nine something? Like in the nines? It's not in the eights. It's in the nines. Um, <clears throat> is the white car still seem like, is it a slow, low on compression? McLovin, I don't know. I haven't really beat the shit out of that car. I drive that car very slowly. I do not beat the shit out of that car. It's got a 3.3 pulley on pump gas, and I do not want to give it, you know, I don't want to go watt yet. Because I, I'm pumped gas. So I just drive it as literally my daily. Once I get C16 in it, which I have a jug of C16, but the clutch is smoked. The clutch is smoked. Every time we do a quick 2-3, it just zing, it zings up in RPM. So I'm waiting to get a clutch. I'm talking to a company right now. I'm going to work together with them and, and get a clutch in the car. And I'm waiting for Ben Calmer to finish building the trans. Because uh, he gave he's, he's doing billet shift forks for me on a trans. And then once he has it ready, I'll take mine out. Or he'll ship me his. I'll, I'll ship mine back to him as a core i'll ship him two because i have an 18 and a 19 and then he then i can uh put the clutch in it and start fucking around and see what it does with pump gas i'm sorry with uh, race gas or e85 saving up for a coyote swap three valve alex vallejo cams are worth it on anything eh, not really not really i mean aldo weld's quickest irs s550 is on stock cams now we're talking about apples to oranges, right? Apples to oranges. Just like the guy said, LSs are LSs, are some of the fast LS Fox bodies. Okay, well, Aldo Weld's quickest IRS S550 on the planet has stock cams and VCT. Cams with the Gen 2R, is it worth it? Do the cams carry the RPM range out of the Gen 2R's efficiency range? No, it just moves your power curve to the right. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll make more power at higher RPMs. But honestly... What are you, a Gen 1 car? Like, a Gen 1 car, stock bottom end with a Gen 2 R, I would not put cams in it. I would not put cams in it. I'd keep the stock cams in it to keep the torque, and it's a stock bottom end. You're limited to 700 horsepower anyway. 
Seven something. So no, I would not do cams on that car. It's a waste of money in my opinion. Alex, paid off on 19 f fifty early. Feels good to have that car. No, gone. It must be a nice feeling. I have uh, two car notes. But 16130, gotcha, gotcha. Since the truck is towing, gotcha. Damn, I'm late. I'll catch up later on. Couch is looking good. Couch is looking good with the with the poverty stars. And the and the and the turbo headers. <laughs> this is fucking great. Um would you agree if nitrous done right is the best power out application? No. Turbos. Turbos is the best power out application by far. Cams with the Gen 2 R is it worth it? Got that. Uh T Top Capri, no, you need to build a chain, guys. Okay. 75% of buyers cannot pay for the steam off of a hot lunch. It is mind numbing. You're a hundred percent right. Like, why would someone buy cams? First of all, your car's not gonna chop. Okay, so if you think buying cams is gonna make your car chop, you are sadly mistaken. But the cams will basically move your power curve to the right of the dyno sheet. If you like how the car drives now with torque down low, leave it alone. The cams will bring the power in way up top. If you have a stock bottom end car on pump gas, you don't need fucking cams. That's fucking stupid. A $2,000 plus dollar mod for 25 to 30 horse, maybe 40, but then it's you're still on pump gas. Like I'm blown away by that whole thought process. Um... How's your day been, Alex? Says Jared Wells. <laughs> it's, it's been a, a tough day today. Tough day with, with the ticket system. Oh, my God. Because people are now racing. People are now, it's springtime. They're racing. And they are losing their fucking minds. They're losing their minds. I have to get to the race. Oh, my God. You're not going to become famous. You're not going to be on Street Outlaws. You're not going to be this badass YouTube channel with an N.A. fucking car. It's not going to fucking happen. But they think it is. You know how many guys I know bought the GT500 for clout purposes and they no people still don't know who the fuck they are? If you want to be popular somewhere, you have to have something else to offer than just you racing. Like if you think you're going to become 1320 video, then you got to do what they do. They go they travel all over the place, spend a whole bunch of money and capture races on video. But the characters and the people behind the camera are just as important. Fred and the other guy, the, the owner, uh, those guys, you watch just as much for them than the racing content. So a lot of guys, oh, I got to get out there and gap fools. And, and then they, they're, they're betting money. Motherfuckers are betting thousands of dollars on, on seven second, eighth mile cars. Eighth mile, seven second cars. You guys are betting thousands of dollars. I am. I'm so glad I'm not into street racing nowadays. It's the gayest shit on the planet. The fighting, the bickering, the begging for look. Get up to the fucking line and take off. No one car, no two car, no crack the tire. Shut the fuck up. God damn it. When you see these videos, you're like, no wonder I don't, I don't race anybody. I don't race. I, I race my friends. Like me and Jake were talking about it the other day. I was in his office and he's like, dude, I don't want to race anyone on the street. Everyone's a fucking idiot. They're an asshole. They don't understand. Like, like if I jumped, I'll go back to my buddy. Hey, man, I jumped. Want to rerun it? Sure, bud. If you jump, you got to pay half. If you break, you got to pay half. If you, I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with racing nowadays? And you're putting thousands of dollars on seven second eighth mile cars. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Built bottom end says McLovin. But are you on pump gas? Are you on pump gas? McLovin. Are you on pump gas? If you are, I wouldn't do cams. Um, Big Poncho became a bitch 11 member. Thank you very much. Dominic Chaplin says, I just bought my car three months ago and they said it's two by Lund. How can I make sure? I don't know. If you Do you have a device? If there's a device serial number and you knew who the previous owner was, we might be able to help you. You got to email us at support at lundracing.com. Good with that. Big Poncho says, I have an F-150 2015. Idles at 500 RPM when warm. Slight tick when cold. Sounds like exhaust leak, but it isn't. Mile per gallon is at about 10. Think it's the solenoids? I don't know. I have no idea. If it's idling at 500 RPM, it's stock. Stock trucks idle at 500 RPM. Um, so I don't know if it's a solenoid. I don't know why miles per gallon are down. I'd have to look at a log to see what's going on with the cams. Joshua Atkins, damn, you paid too much money. What are you doing, man? He goes, evening, Alex. I appreciate you tuning my 16 GT uh, manual transmission performance packs. Whipple the other day with Astita. Nice. Picking it up tomorrow. Cars, a dream come true in the making for over 25 years. Thank you, and Lund. Yes, Astita has... Um, you're picking it up when? Tomorrow morning? I'm trying to think if we if we actually finished that car. I don't remember. I did like six Whipple cars today, and I finished four. 
And then I, I finished two turbo cars today and then one nitrous car and a turbo truck. Dude, it's just remote session hell right now. Um, but yeah, if you have any other issues, man, just get with us and we'll be able to take care of it. Um, you're going to have to relearn how to drive it. Understand that. The Whipple car, the bypass shutting, you'll have like a surge of just you know, acceleration when the bypass shuts. We try to lessen that by the throttle feel. So you'll just have to get used to the car. Whatever you thought it was stock, just don't don't think it should, it's going to drive like stock. It's going to drive very good, but it's not going to drive like it did stock. So you're going to have to relearn some of your habits, but I'm sure you'll be happy with the power delivery of that Whipple. Congratulations, and I'm very happy to work with you guys. And Steeda, they're great people to work with. They, they know what the fuck they're doing. I like them very much. <clears throat> did you say before I can just throw E1R with no revisions to be comparable to A85? Yes. Ethanol 1R, <laughs> throw it in with the same tune. You don't need any tune changes. It's 85% ethanol. Um, E85 or just swap a Gen 3, Gen 3 R head unit. Oh, gotcha. Uh, so cams are cheaper than a head unit, but you'll make more power with a head unit change. So if you have a uh, built bottom end E85 and a Gen 2 R, I'd rather save up for a Gen 3 and make 200 more horse than with cams. Now, are cams going to lessen the hit down low? Yes, but I would just do a head unit swap, to be honest with you, and keep this cam stock. I just keep the cam stock, honestly. I don't think it's needed. <clears throat> so you should be good to go. That'd be good. The Gen 3R built bottom end Gen 1. That's the car I would build. Well, you just told everyone 2650. Built bottom end, I would put a fucking 69 millimeter pulley and a 15% on E85 on a, on, a, on a manual car. Ellis, guys, when they buy a Coyote, they go, her der max RPM for Coyote when the dyno 6300 RPM. Ellis, guys, when they buy a Coyote, her der max RPM for a Coyote when on the dyno is 6300 RPM. Yes, I had a Coyote, uh, an Ellis guy. I said, give me a watt hit, uh, 3,500 to 7,500 in fourth gear. They go, 7,500? I go, 7,500. And they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And then they come back, they're like, it is so weird seeing the tack go up there that fast. And the car kept pulling. I go, right? So that's the allure. That's the that's the positive. That's the that's the the thing people want from a coyote is the high revs, the lack of having to work on it, and the ease you can make power with just boost. It's a good time. It's a good time. Kill the coyote in the house, give me a hundred bucks. He must have won a race the other day or something, huh? Do you got the racing with the KOK crew? Uh thank you, man. I appreciate that, bro. When's that thing gonna get out there, man? When are we gonna see some logs from that car, man? Eliza's S550 gave me five bucks. Thank you very much. And goes, Alex talking about 1700 Tito laughing my ass off. I don't know who that is. Who the fuck is 1700 Tito? <laughs> Am I supposed to know who that is? Alex, how about a P51 intake? Do I need a revision or logs? 2810 GT, Eliza's S550. All you need is if you are tuned on a stock airbox right now, you don't need a revision. If you have any other intake but stock, yes, you need a revision. And we got to start from, actually, we don't have to start from the beginning. I just fucking make all your tunes stock airbox because the P51 is a stock airbox with a filter at the end of it. it seems to work though. Cuba County for the win says Javi Luna. Chuck name, El Bichotazo. <clears throat> it's either El Bichotazo or La Chocha. La Chocha is probably going to be what the name is. What suspension mods do you have with the white card? Do you experience any wheel hop? I have uh, UPR end links and Eibach Pro Kit. That's it. That's it. Alex, why crap on cams when you love Jeremiah's Camp NA so much? I think it's cool. Just expensive. Michael Nunn. He asked me on a boosted fucking car, Michael Nunn. Michael Nunn. He asked me on a fucking boosted car if cams are worth it. What the fuck is wrong with people? You com you're comparing two different fucking setups. God damn, dude. This is what I mean. Imagine this times 50 in the ticket system. Oh, boo -boo -boo. oh on a completely different car? On a completely different car? On a completely different car with completely different mods? Completely different setup? Dude. Dude. Some fucking people. Love ya, but what the fuck? I got a buddy who bought a 1650, F-150. He wants to keep all the torque. I recommend the lunch. Keep the stock Manny. And just tune and go. Budget is 1300 Recommendations? Yeah, if he wants to keep the torque, keep the stock manifold. And go uh, E85, which, you know, he could do flex. Now the car's already flexed, or the truck's already flex capable. So he could just do a tune. Um, we'll dial in the shift point to about 6,500 RPM, and it'll keep all the torque. If he wants to make high RPM horsepower, he's got to change out the manifold and change the tune. Also, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Dominic Chaplin says, also messaged my governor about the EPA and 100% agrees with letting consumers build their card now as we see fit. Thanks for informing everyone. Yes, now the EPA stuff is still ongoing. I'm not obviously talking too much about it because nothing new has happened. But I still urge you guys to go and sign the RPM or urge your governor, you urge your senator, urge your representative to uh, introduce the RPM Act at the next session of Congress, which I don't think this one will do anything. I think we have to wait a year and a half until the midterms come and you kick out all the fucking Democrats and every idiot that supports the EPA and the Green New Deal. Because that's what you're going to start hearing in the next six months. All of a sudden, there's going to be a push to save the planet. Trust me, you're going to see it. This administration is going to try to push green energy down your fucking throat so bad. CNN and, and MSNBC, you know, they're going to green deal, green and green and restructure. And uh, they're just going to shove it down your fucking throat. Anyone who supports that shit needs to go. They need to fucking go because they're just in it for themselves. It's a fucking slush fund. Fuck this politics bullshit. But thank you, Dominic Chaplin. John Cena says, what power level do you recommend OPGs for Gen 2? Um, anytime you go boosted over like 700 wheel, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I'm not going to do OPGs on my fucking white car. I don't give a shit. Fuck it. Let them blow up. Let them, let them fucking take the motor out. I don't care. I'm going to do a 3-3 pulley on a V3 and fucking send that shit. We'll see how long they last. Watch them last. <clears throat> Alice, what would be needed to a 21 M6 to go in the low 11s? Low 11s? <clears throat> we had a CJ customer go 1090s. CJ E85 uh, free flown exhaust slicks, and he went out there and ran 1090s with a uh, with a CJ. Michael Nunn's talking all that shit. You crap on cams even when talking NA. Just depends on your mood. Whatever the wind blows. Good questions tonight. Yeah, exactly. I crap on cams. I when I ask a question, <clears throat> when I when someone asks me a question, I answer their question right so if they go alex are cams worth it on my stock intake car i go no alex if i want to go max effort na cj and run nines stick do you recommend cams yes so michael nunn it's specific to the application retard the fuck is wrong with people what the fuck is wrong with people? Like they don't, this is, this is why, this is why people think Americans are fucking stupid. Because they think because I dislike cams on one application, I dislike all cams. Like, wow, Michael Nunn, buy an LS, buy an LS, start, <laughs> you depends on the, you know, you said you like cams on CJ's, Jeremiah Camp's car, but now you don't like them on 18 Manifold, a stock intake. Mind fucking blown. Every day, every day. It's like this, guys. There's 30 Michael Nuns in my ticket system saying the same type of dumb shit. Channel support. Meanwhile, certain Florida tuning companies deleting RPM Act related comments on their YouTube channel. What? Why would they do that? You have to address it. Look, it's not ignoring it. Putting your head in the sand is not going to make it go away. So if anybody is not supporting the RPM Act or against the EPA overreach in this industry, fuck them. Fuck them in the ass. Fuck them. Get the you putting your head down in the sand is not going to all of a sudden make them not look at you. Do you think the EPA doesn't know that people that are tuning are tuning? They know your emails. They know your text messages. They know your phone conversations. They know everything already. So by the time that you get the, they already got the info. It doesn't matter what you delete from YouTube. It doesn't matter. In the last five years, if you've tuned a single turbo anything, Guess what, buddy? They know. They know. Guys, guys, putting your head in the sand is not going to make it go away. No way. I hate to ask this, but port the lower. The car is on a 69 upper stock lower or put a 15% on it. What brand lower? Now, the porting is, is depending on who you ask, um, it is important on the uh, TVS setup, right? The TVS setup. I personally didn't see huge gains from porting the lower. I didn't see any 
huge difference. I didn't see anything that made me go, whoa, porting is so worth it on a lower and high boost. I just didn't see a huge gain. I used the MFP manifold. It made a little more torque than the others did, but I didn't, I didn't say, well, it made so much more torque. It made so much more this. IATs were so much lower that it's worth the price tag. I just, I just didn't see that. But if you're gonna go max effort, you port everything. You port everything. If you're gonna go max effort, Michael Nunn will say, oh, you son, you hate porting. Is the red car stock suspension or adjustable rear shocks worth buying for an NA car? Rabbit, Yodi, 5 If that car goes 10s, it's already been 11.23. It kind of already proves its point. If that car goes 10s, it proves that you don't, need to know, you don't need to do shit to these cars up to a certain point to run a number. So if that car goes 10s, I'm going to go stock everything. Stock, stock brakes, stock axles, stock drive shaft, stock springs, stock struts, stock shocks. People are going to go, oh, wow, Alex did all that with stock shit. Yep, yep. Oh, but he cheated. He got a bias ply tire. Michael Nunn is back talking shit. Alex, you're so pissed tonight. I don't blame you. I understand your answer, question, and context. You actually did say, why would anyone buy cams, by the way, in that context? In that context. If a TVS guy, if a TVS guy says, well, I got a built bottom end. I got a built bottom end. And uh, I want, you know, all the shit. Oh, built bottom end? Just, I said, throw a 2650 on it. Make more boost. Again, because this is what I'm using for an example. Lund Racing went 790s on their Gen 3 Black Bean Whipple car with stock cams. Midnight Performance with their twin turbo uh, customer's car went 7s with stock cams. Aldo Welds run 7s with VCT in the quickest S550 IRS car on the planet. So why would anyone buy cams? If you're gonna go boosted. If you wanna play the NA game, if you wanna play the fast NA game, if you're only gonna be NA and you wanna just spend money, sure, get fucking cams. Have at it, buddy. Alex, me dijo el use Navy que compraste una mamalonski, cuh? Yes, Ezekiel Palacios, I got myself an F-150, 18 F-150, I don't know when it's gonna be here. I'm hoping tomorrow or Thursday. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. We're snitching and making deals with the EPA. Exactly, exactly. Matt Twin Living GT. See, you know who the you know who the real snitch is. Oh, baby, if I if I could be just let loose, let off the leash. Oh, the crazy snitching that's coming from that camp up north. Ooh, baby, good shit, good shit. Junior Frankenstein says, looking forward to working with you guys on my first Coyote build. Have a 2020 A10 with a 2650. Yes, been LS guy since 2002, but not hard to pay attention to the Houston. It's it's hard not to pay attention to the Houston guys that run versus that the run what they run versus what it takes to the new LTs to run or get close to it. So yeah, Junior Frankenstein, you get it. Like you understand that what you have to do to an LT to or an LS to run the number that a stock long block coyote can do and it's impressive because you can say wait i can do 25 pounds of boost on a stock long block coyote and go sevens <laughs> eights you know where the clutches on the transmission and some suspension parts and a little weight reduction it's really hard to ignore that so i appreciate that i appreciate you uh you know saying look you either get on board or don't you know like look look at the supers the supers are impressive supers with bolt on the running nines all right now whether you like the super or not it's up to you but when a Mustang, if you're a Camaro, Corvette, Pontiac G8, TTSV guy, you see what these Mustangs are running, you know inside, even though you probably are a diehard Chevy guy, you go, God damn it, that thing rolls the fuck out. Guys, Mustangs were outlawed from the heavyweight class at Texas 2K. And do you know how many people were so happy to see the Mustang gone? It didn't get beat straight up. It spun. So you know how many people were happy to see that Mustang gone? Because they know if it would have not spun, that thing would have taken the fucking event. And then the heavyweight guys would have been like, well, that's bullshit. And they did it anyway. They said no Mustangs. So stop calling it heavyweight, Texas 2K organizers. Call it the anything heavy but a Mustang class. Because let's be honest, that's what it is. 
it's anything but a Mustang class. So it's hard to ignore how fast Mustangs can go with minimal mods. It's good shit. Even at that weight, that car was at 4,200 pounds and it was still going 860s. Crazy. <clears throat> but thank you, uh, Junior Frankstein. My buddy has a new Gen 1 Illuminator for sale. How much power do you think it'll hold? <clears throat> I say high 900s. Your limitation is going to be the cylinder walls because the sleeves are stock. So I, I would say high 900 to keep it safe. On occasion, 1,000. Alex, just went with the four fuel system and the free flow and exhaust for boost. Would you recommend turbos or supercharger? Only looking for 800 to 900. 17 GT350 Gen 2 motor. Do you have a 17 GT350 Gen 2 motor? Oh, oh, you have a, uh, what? A Gen 2. I'm so confused. A 17 GT350 Gen 2 motor. You mean like their 18 to 19 motors or, or 19 and up motors? So 800, you can make it with a Whipple. You can make it with a Pro Charge. You can make it with a Vortec. I would do a Whipple. I would do a Whipple um, based on just the packaging and the lack of, like you, you're not going to be under the hood that much with a Whipple making that kind of horsepower on that kind of setup. So I would do a Whipple blower. Um, believe it or not, the Odins are now making their way into GT350s also because there's like the biggest back order on the planet for Whipples, like eight weeks or something like that. So VMP is like, all right, we're just going to sell you guys Odins for everything. So Odins are starting to show up on GT350s also. Junior says, you should put some Juice World quotes on your car. <laughs> Lucid dreams. A horse named Dollar says, does MS109 require a different plug and gap brand NA Gen 1? Hope, you're, hope you enjoy your F150. I don't change the gap on anything NA. Stock gap, stock spark plugs. The, the, the red car has stock gap, stock spark plugs. Matt Long says, I had a simple 4200 question, but it was right after, and it's gone. And it's gone. Where does it go? I had a 4200 question right after the none question. Okay, sorry, let me go up. Bro, that, that, but where's the cam, dude? Um, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh, you must have just been like, okay, I don't want to get yelled at by Alex. <laughs> oh, shit. You could call it the bitch up. Someone says, EPA me la pela, says Omar Garza. His license plate says, EPA me la pela. My God. They actually approve that. That's so awesome. The heavyweight class is a joke. It is a joke. It is. Let's be honest. It's the Challenger Charger class and CTSV class. Call it Challenger Charger versus CTSV. Don't call it heavyweight because a guy with a LS Fox body throws a bunch of weight in the back will gap everyone in that class. All right? Well, that's not the spirit of the class. Well, the thing is, what I was thinking about that class was the spirit of the class. The spirit of the class. The spirit of the class. It's called the heavyweight class. I thought the heavyweight class was for fat ladies. <laughs> the truck name, La Sancha. <laughs> the maintenance girl. I could call her maintenance girl. I could call the truck maintenance girl. Uh, my Whipple is going to take 12 weeks. Woo-wee, I'm so sorry to hear that. Why? What's the backlog? Like, is it the punks of billet? Like, rotor packs? What's going on? Maybe uh, Bondo Bird could come in and tell me. Because uh, he works there. Alex Cisnero says, hey, Alex, what front struts for the track? Gen 1 bolt-on, Vikings rear struts. I'm looking into Vikings for the front, too. I don't know. What spring rate would be best? Race weight, 3,300 pounds. I'd call someone like UPR for that kind of information. I know people are going to suggest other people, but I would call someone like UPR for that because they've done it a lot on their personal vehicles and they sell that package a lot. Viking is the one that sells all the shit. People just rebrand Viking struts and shocks to their own thing. So I would call UPR and be like, hey man, this is my race weight. I need springs for the front. <clears throat> is it necessary? Eh, probably not. But is it good to have adjustability? Always. Michael Nunn said, no, Alex said you don't need any fucking thing for anything. Just stock everything. I heard him say it once. Oh, oh, oh. I bet they would try if they could. Uh, Yo, don't beat you. Built, built in China. Built. I don't think Whipple's. Well, I don't know. I think it's a materials thing. I don't think it's a China thing. <laughs> Call the F-150 La Papi or the father. The father. Cooks is eight weeks out, so it must be materials, right? It must. What? What's the big backlog of, of parts? Like, is it materials? Is it cost? Like, why? I don't know. I'd love to figure out. Uh, I'd love to figure out why. Why the the big delay? 
Um, ordered my Whipple October and received it late February. Yep. Wow. Joshua Atkins. That's, yeah, that's, that's late. Now that's only going to help people like VMP. And if VMP was smart, they'd have a bunch of shit ready to go. Ready? I mean, I'm saying kits and they should promote the shit out of it. Kits in stock. Duh, duh, duh. This is the time to do it. But if Whipple starts shipping shit out, then they're going to lose out on it. Alex makes my week <laughs> if anyone still watches cnn they were brainwashed decades ago got it maintenance girl now that's a good name for those who know no maintenance girl exactly oh my god this chat's making you crazy to the point not even fun watching and michael nunn you can go <laughs> you you can go everyone else seems to be having a good time you're the only one that's getting feelings um built in china keep yelling like that it's funny bitch no no michael nunn doesn't like it alex why are you mad i'm not having fun anymore <laughs> dude there's always a target uh on someone's back uh, on the chat so today just falls on you michael kennedy says i've seen a turbo along with a supercharger on a car ever seen that in your daily work <laughs> boost what about a turbo and a supercharger at the same time i've seen it it's just dumb as shit the technology has come along nowadays that you you know you can get torque with turbos sizing the turbos properly boost controllers i mean it, it it's not it's cool, but dumb at the same time. Because if a boosted, you know, one power adder, let's say a TVS car, 2650, 69 upper, 50% lower, bam, runs an 820. And then your tri-boosted, you know, your, your supercharger turbo car runs 1050s. That's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. So it's cool, but dumb at the same time. Does one tune cover? Does one tune cover wastegate pressure to high boost? Yeah, yes, sir. Your Ruby GT, it's the power adder. So whatever power adder you have, right out all the way. You don't have to pay for any revisions uh, up to you blow it up. <laughs> so you should be good to go. Love you. Just relax, says Michael Nunn. <laughs> China manufacturing is lagging. My 4.6 Molnar rods have a 10 week lead. Eric Kirby, damn. Vote him out. We're not gonna vote him out. I like him. He's he hasn't done me any harm. He's cool. Michael, mine is next. Tony Bolton gonna unfollow on everything <laughs> fuck off michael no 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 relax relax <laughs> he's fine he doesn't give me any, any drama there's such a thing as dumb questions in the chat there is and he just happens to ask three of them uh cuban coyote <laughs> cuban coyote talking that shit i like the fact that you can have your cake and eat it too cam chop higher pm without installing heads cam lifters oil pump timing chain just still to get beat by a tuned 85 long tube ffe 50 mustang 100 percent killian bibs the tricharger inside the engine with Lamborghini exhaust. Remember that guy? Oh, I think it's tricharged. Uh, love that. Say, Alex, what's the best headers or brand for Coyotes in terms of fitment, easiest installation? So I think there's three top brands, right? I think Ultimate Header to me is King Daddy based on fitment and the quality of the work. American Racing Headers is also very good quality, great fitting headers, and so are Cooks. So you can't go wrong with any of those three. I just happen to have ultimate headers on all my vehicles. Ever planning on turbo setup of any of your cars? Yes. If any of the cars are going to go turbo, it will be the white car stick. And it'll be more of a roll car. It won't be a, a drag car because I already have drag cars. Um, have you tried any other ignition coil brands or OEM only? Not for power. Just failure replacement. Mike A, I haven't had any coil failures ever. So all my cars have stock coils. CNN, Fox, and MSNBC all fucking sucks. You're not wrong. Vultures laugh my ass off. We just all on edge today, ready to squabble. Mike Nunn just busting balls. It's all good. Now he's good. He's good. Have you tried any other? Already got that. Got that. Got that. Defcon. Huh? Martin Five O on a return fuel system with triple pumps. What's the least amount of fuel you should have in the tank? At least a quarter or more. Because remember, guys, a return cell fuel system hat is open. There is no bucket right so the bucket has some fuel in it and it will not slosh but a return style fuel system hat is open to and your whole tank is basically your bucket so fuel can slosh and momentarily starve you of fuel causing a stumble if you have too low of fuel so i always prefer at least a quarter or a half tank in your shit all the time Calpin and dropping his dick on the chat gave me 100 bucks but hey so did cuban coyote so, hey, we got two poppies on this chat. Thank you very much, Kyle Brandon. Again, you don't have to do that. You've done enough for the channel. Hell, you've been the main driver of the red car. You're the one that actually made me go, shit, he sent me the Steeda Crash Bars. He sent me a bunch of stuff. That guy's been super legit. And a lot of the success of the red car is due to Kyle Brandon because it wouldn't even be in my head. It'd be sold by now. Is if, if it wasn't for him urging me to keep going with the red car. 
Ford makes good coil, says my backwards. Um, what is FBO power difference between Gen 3 F-150 and Mustang? Would a Mustang cam swap be worth it on F-150? Um, depends on the generation F-150, but V12 Buick guy, I think Gen 3s make similar power mod for mod than Mustangs. Um, what is, uh, we got that. And Ka King Daddy's here. <laughs> KB representing, Kyle Brandon. KB, um, trains emit more P per passenger than a car. Stupid EPA, you're not wrong. You are not wrong, brother. Running a stage three route on a factory sealed first gen has an 82 millimeter pulley currently. What's max effort pulley for pump gas? Once it spins all apart, I'll put a second gen short block in it. 79 millimeter pulley seems to be the 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 limit for not just the bottom end, but the, the gas. Pump gas. And then even on E85, you can make 720 or so on a 79 millimeter pulley or maybe high 700s or high 600s, low 700s, which is very close to the limits of the rods uh, on Gen 1 Coyotes. Joe Jackson says, Alex, your description of the LS guy and his type is spot on. I'm an old school Chevy engine guy and do my own engines, but I watched this channel because of the simplicity of Coyote's ability. Joe Jackson, thank you very much for at least co-signing on what I'm trying to say. Look, a lot of people think I'm full of shit. A lot of people think I don't have any chops, that I've never done shit, that I've only been a Coyote guy my whole life, that I've never owned a small block Ford, that I've never worked on cars, that I've worked on more shit than you can imagine. I just don't need to feel like justifying that all the time or telling you all about it i've had probably 30 fox bodies in my life pulled engines transmissions rear ends lifters heads cams you name it i've done it all i've done it all to all fox bodies on the planet but the only time people got to know me is during the coyote era so they think i'm a coyote guy i am a coyote guy because of the simplicity because i've done all the cam swapping all the dumb shit i know it and the ls guys are literally going through what us Fox Body Ford guys were doing in the late 80s, early 90s. Just under the hood all the time, swapping massive parts out to gain minimal power. Once the Coyote came around, I became a believer. I said, wait a minute, this thing makes 420 stock, the 11, boosted, it made 650, pump gas with 10 pounds of boost. I was like, I'm in. I'm in. No Fox Body was making that kind of power. No, none, zero. Now I have a fucking Fairmont Fox Body with a Coyote in it making 900 horsepower running eights. I would have never thought that when I was under the hood replacing my Scorpion rockers and the pedestal mount breaking for the 18th time because I smashed the limiter. Oh, I know that pain. What's that sound? I think one of your pedestals uh, broke. <laughs> you got to get stud mount rockers. Oh, but the adjusting them is a pain in the ass. We need you coming in a little too high power and you want to squabble. Yes, today's one of those days. I just like, I just want to squabble and I just like, you know, I just, I just want to be a fucking asshole. So, you know, here we go. What the fuck? What's up, nigga? You want to squabble? And then we do some fuck you, bloody. Bloody, fuck you, bloody. <laughs> fucking mother, bloody, fuck bitch. <laughs> and Wednesday coming in a little too high power, brother. Take this out, fool. Okay, you coming that? a little too high power. Oh, no, no. I like it. I should, that should be louder. Um, Zach Davis says, made the mistake of looking at a data log. I saw plus 315 reading on the knock sensors when the nitrous hit. 150 shot on a Gen 1. Knock went down as RPM went up. Sound like false knock to you? It sounds like the nitrous came in very early. So if you brought the nitrous in under 3,500 RPMs, delay it at about 3,900 RPMs, and it should keep the knock sensor happy. <clears throat> So we have Michael uh, Nunn says, I text type exactly how I talk and think things come across wrong. The same way I cause problems texting chicks. Love you, Alex. You're putting in work tonight. It's, it's, I appreciate you. I'm not mad. I don't get mad at anybody. Like, I don't get mad. When I say, fuck you, go away. I, I'm like talking like I talk to my friends. I talk to all you guys like I talk to my friends. I don't respectfully talk to my friends. I go, hey, buddy. I go, what's up? F word. I can't say because YouTube will literally take shit out. Um, you know, call them derogatory terms for everything. I'm not nice to any of my friends, and that's how we talk. So I'd like to think if I talk shit on you, it's like I'm talking to my friends. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, Carlos Otega says 14 GT MT82 CG Fab single turbo hot side, badass, which is basically that. <laughs> um, what size wastegate spring for 650 wheel? What would I need for turn to dude? You're not, okay, Carlos Ortega. I love you and I love to take your money. I have no fucking idea. I don't know what size turbo you have. Uh, you're, you're, what size wastegate spring for 650 wheel and would need a four full system at power level? Look, uh, 14, oh wait, 14, 14 GTM TD2, I'm sorry. What size wastegate spring, 650 wheel? Um, it depends on the turbo, right? So how big's your turbo? CG5 single turbo hot side. Boy, uh, I would think, uh, see the thing is, when you put a spring in there, you can make 
that boost level times three, right? So if you put an eight pound spring, you can make 24 pounds of boost. If you put a five pound spring, you can make 15 pounds of boost. If you may put a 10 pound spring, you can make 30 pounds of boost, right? That's how it works, I think. So um, 650 wheel, the, if you have a boost controller, an eight pound spring will be plenty if they come in eight, eight pound increments. I have no idea. I'm not really good with turbos. Zach Davis said, made the mistake of, look at that. And Brent 5 became a member. I got about five minutes left. Ah, two minutes left. I've been on for over an hour and a half. So I'll stop at 930. You got four minutes left. I've been good. It's been good. The chat's been good. Been active. Had over 600 people, which is nice average number. Kyle Brandon topped in. Uh, Cuban Coyote stopped in. Casey, my lady, is out there having my back. We got also YouTube crab and a free speech as the mods. I love it. This is so nice to get back to normal. <clears throat> Ruby, GT, in your opinion, what is the best intake manifold for a turbo setup? Um, under 30 PSI, I like the 18 manifold or the 350 manifold. Or the Boss. Honestly, all three are really good. But gun to my head, gun to my head, a GT350 manifold. Under 25 pounds of boost. <laughs> Over that, you need something metal. Hey, Alex, thoughts on Matt 660P51 intake. Thanks from Hawaii. It's a stock airbox modified with his elbow and, in, and filter. It makes good power. And the nice thing about us tuning it is it gets a stock airbox tune and it just works. So Matt did a lot of testing with me with his, what he calls a P51 intake. It's a stock airbox modified and it actually flows good numbers and he's out there beating people with it. So look, I've always said a stock airbox is best for Gen 3s and he found a way to maximize a stock airbox. Air and the nice thing is for your tuner, it gets a stock airbox tune. It's a really nice time. Um, at what high RPM, I have to shift slow or it won't take second or fourth or fine. It happened on a training work and short throw install. Do you think it's a clutch? It is the clutch. Jake and Brandenberry, it's not releasing at high RPMs. It's the clutch. It's the clutch. It's the clutch. It's always the clutch. Uh, Michael Nunn became a member. Putilo. Not only has he given me money on this chat, he became a member supporting the cause. Gotta love the dude. Gotta love the dude. KC526 killing it as always. Yeah, she's always on there. She's giving people the, the links. She's deleting things, everything. What's your opinion on the turbocharged F-150 stock 5.0? Uh, I, Mama Lona eventually is going to be turbo. It's eventually going to be a turbo. Did you guys see the, uh, did I show you the, uh, the, the, the turbo craziness that Jake is doing down at uh, PBH with his truck? Look at this, man. Look at this. This is... This looks like some Frankenstein ass shit. I can't wait to get it on my truck. This is ooh, this, 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 this rings fucking. There it is. Look at that, bro. That's the turbo going to a collector. Two, whatever the fuck those are. One routed with one so they can spool the turbo up quicker. Then it opens up at five psi. That's gonna be under mounted under the truck. I want that on my truck, but look at that crazy ass looking shit. Imagine that shit under your F-150. No one even knows. You open the hood, you don't see shit, but this is like by the bed. And it's making all these crazy fucking noises and gapping motherfuckers with a big ass 80 plus millimeter bullseye turbo. I want that. I said, Jake, the moment you make that happen, I'm buying it. So I bought the truck based on this. This is how much I co-sign on Jake's work, right? There's, there's a thing called supporting the people you're surrounded with. And I support Power by the Hour 100%. Once he gave me his vision of what his red truck was going to be, I said, I'm buying a truck. He goes, yeah. I go, yeah. I want to support what you got going on. And after his vision became reality, I was so happy with the end result. I'm like, oh my God. That's what you were thinking the whole time? He goes, yeah, I just want badass stuff under the truck. And he goes, I'm not looking to beat the world record. I don't want to beat the world. I don't want to be the fastest F-150. I just want to go nines on the street and fuck. That truck will never see the track, says Jake. I just want to be on E85 and go up against a car, a truck, and just gap the shit out of it with this setup on the street with my 22s on Nitto 555R2s. He made me a believer. So I bought a truck based on him. I need a truck to tow, but I didn't need that truck. I could have bought a Tahoe or could have bought anything. But I bought a Mamalona, not only for channel content, for tuning, because a lot of guys, a lot of Mexicans, a lot of people like a little F-150 regular cap truck, but to support Jake's vision of, of uh, the turbo setup. I support. I put my money behind my words, bro. 
Some more support. I'll be buying the blower tomorrow. Mad excited. Only weird is the 47 pound injector sound a little too small to be tuned by you guys, right? Phil, if it's a Gen 3, the 47s are fine because you have 16 injectors on a Gen 3. If it's a Gen 2 or a Gen 1, that's kind of a small injector. Curse Garage says, going all out on my GT500 to break the stick record and called UPR on your recommendation and couldn't be happier with the quality of the parts and knowledge of the staff. Thanks again, Alex. Curse Garage. 850 is the world record. 850 by BPS Billet Pro Shops. That's going to be a tough record to beat, but man, I support you. Have at it. And glad you hit up UPR and uh, they took care of you. They're great people. Badass shit, bitch. I can't wait to get my truck, says Juan Resendez. Would the P51 intake be compatible to a sealed Steeda box filter? No. Um, supporting your friends and seeing them be successful is the best thing ever. Jared Wells, when I was down and out, rock bottom, rock bottom, 2015, Jake had my back. Donnie Renfro had my back. Frank Perdomo had my back. Those are my three closest friends here. Had my back. And they didn't even know who the fuck I was. But they said, man, this guy's, you know, he's struggling. So when they picked up the little pieces of my life and helped me get back on my feet, and I have become successful by all measurements, I've become very successful, I kick it back to them. I'm like, Jake, what do you need? What do you need to support something? You need me to make, what the fuck do you need? So you got to help each other. You got to surround yourself with good people. So I don't surround myself with takers, and none of my friends are takers. They've all been excellent people, and I support them. Guys, <laughs> two of my vehicles are literally going to go away for a very long time to help my friends with their ventures. Two of my vehicles are going to go away for a very long time to help my friends with their business. That's how down I am for the cause, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm down. The red car's going to go away for a very long time after Friday. You won't see it for a very long time. So Friday will be the last lick I'll make on it at the track. And that'll go away. And that'll come back it's better than ever. But I'm not modding it. It's not going to go away to mod it. It's going to go away to do some R&D. Then it comes back and I'll keep trucking along. Um, you used to care less about fast trucks. Now Jake's made you full blooded Taquache. Look, I support Jake. I don't give a shit about trucks. But Jake had a vision. And after seeing what Manuel can do and what the tuning that we can provide make these trucks go, and I need a tow vehicle, why the hell not? YouTube Corrupt, uh, friends like that are hard to find these days. YouTube, I have found three gems, three gems here in Florida. And in my whole life, I've never come across people this solid. So I hold on to these guys like, like hardcore. They're great people. Used S550 GTs are getting mad money on Caravana, CarMax, Vroom. Yes, I can sell my car for $25,000 right now. A 11.2 fully loaded GT red pretty as fuck getting down. I could probably sell for 25 grand. Not going to do that. Not yet. If you want takers, tune into the dating channel. <laughs> that looks like a diesel setup. It does. Alex, first question I ever ask you, 2011 Coyote says, I have a lunch for my 11.50 with everything stocked besides FFE. I never data logged it or anything. Just sent me the tune. Why is that? You could data log at 2011.50. If you have a stock airbox, stock injectors, stock manifold, stock, 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 no logs are required. No logs are required. But if you want to data log your vehicle to ensure that the octane is good and the car's running well, go ahead and data log it. We'll take a look at a data log. We owe you that much. Um, I need a truck myself so I can put my coyote under non-opp fuck cali 100 bro fuck cali fuck cali in the ass what's tomorrow's chat gonna be about uh yeah, i don't know i don't know we'll see what happens uh if you guys are not part of that dating channel go ahead and join up on that dating channel uh, i'm sure casey will put up a link uh we basically bro out man we bro out and the bumble swipe segment is the best thing on youtube dude i listen back to my shows just for the Bumble Swipe segments. And it makes me laugh so hard because I'm so freaking stupid. Okay, guys, I'm going to get the hell out of here. It's been an hour and 37 minutes. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Michael Nunn for, for the support and the chat. Uh, Kyle Brandon for the big uh, donation and also uh, Cuban Coyote for the big donation. Hopefully, I'll see you sending some logs really soon. And for those of you that are customers, I'll see you tomorrow on the ticket system. Thanks for joining in. And for those of you that are members of the dating channel, see you guys.